the 10th of August, 2013, and we are in Kildare Town. We're on our way to St. Bridget's Cathedral. We're going to have a historic tour of uh, important sites to the McCormick family. This is St. Bridget's Cathedral. This is St. Bridget's Cathedral. It was built about 800 years ago, and this is the famous fire pit. St. Bridget. St. Bridget's Cathedral. Kitchen? Yes, we're going to go there in a, just a little while. This tower, Kildare Tower, was erected about 900 years ago. And you can still go up into it. When it opens in a few minutes, we're going to climb up to the top of it. It's quite tall. It's the second tallest tower in Ireland. And it's very, very old. That's the second tallest <laughs> The McCormick clan is gathering at St. Bridget's. There's starting to be a lot of people here. Here at the cathedral. And there's a lot of people gathered around. Soon we'll be getting on a bus and seeing a lot of sights. God is Bridget to win the first St. Bridget took the name Bridget and she became Christianized and stuff like that. So, I mean, that's why we started here. There is a, a connection between St. Bridget and the fella who actually granted her the land was, a, was Corrup. He was probably a, a second or third generation of farming who granted her the lands and she had a, a, a huge section of kill there. So, uh, we move on, we get on the bus and as we go, I'll tell you more about the McCormick family in Kildare and their origins and the association with Knockallan and Kilcullen and the High Kings that were here and they had several battles down in um, the south of Kildare and for about 400 years uh, it would be known as Dal Cormac. Dal would mean the same as Descendant or Mac. So there would have been, I suppose, half of Kildare would have been actually called McCormick at the time. So, and Kildare County, you now a lot of people say it's the Church of the Oak. But there was a second kind of a legend associated that it was Dara of Rock McCormick. He was the Irish High King, and the Dara that the Kildare was named after him, the Church of Dara, or you know the, the land of Dara. So we move on and we get on the bus and we have a good day. Let's go on the top rope. We're going to St. Bridget's Well. Very, very welcome. I'm really thrilled to see you all here and I thank the Moss for organising the gathering. But particularly, particularly for including this wonderful visit here to St. Bridget's Well. And here in Kildare we're absolutely thrilled that the Bridgetin sisters have come back and are rekindling very positively the spirit of St. Bridget amongst us. 
I'd like to introduce these two sisters to you who are also sisters in the one's family, siblings, Sister Mary Meenahan and Sister Rita. And I'd like to thank you. And Richard is a male. On the double. On the double. And we're Tipperary from Tipperary. Anybody here from Tip? Tip. What part? Cashel. Cashel. And we're from Nina. Yeah. So I will leave it to Sister Mary. Feathered. Feathered. Great. I will leave it without further ado to Sister Mary and Sister Rita to tell you all about the spirit of St. Bridget and to just to share this visit with us and with you, and I hope you enjoy it, okay? Thank you, Melda. Well, welcome to the well. We have two St. Bridget's wells here in Kildare. This is the little garden well, place of prayer and pilgrimage. And over near the Japanese gardens, we have the little healing well, but you have the time to go to everything today. So we decided we'd just bring you here. Okay. Now, a flavor, we have people here from Argentina. From Seattle. Seattle. We had a Tipperary. Naples. Chicago. Limerick. Oh, yes. I hope you win the All Ireland. I was delighted that coffee. And Dublin could win it too. Oh, no. You're And we have people here from California, they tell me. And at the back, you're proud. Dublin. Dublin, yeah. Dublin. 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 Chicago. There's a car coming down now, so we might probably have to move in. Just and there were no Brigidian abbeys in Ireland after the 16th century. And in 1807, a bishop in this diocese of Kildare and Lachlan Hutt. Paid me the Paid me the poetry. And got the inspiration to revive again the Sisters of St. Bridget. And he brought a oak sapling, Kildara, Kildare, Church of the Oak, from Kildare, brought it to Tullo in Carlo. That's where he lived himself. And that oak is there, 206 years old today. And we've taken little oak saplings from that oak. And we hope to build a new centre. I think Amelia was, I don't know if she showed you the site on the way down. No, there's We're in no, the process I, there was no, no mic microphone on the bus, so no, you might take it. it. On the way back, maybe. And, uh, we're going to sow the little oak saplings from that tree around our new centre. <coughs> now, Rita, would you like to share something here with them before yeah. we move in? Well, I know just to, to welcome you. I think maybe, Mary, as we go through, we share it with them. Right, okay. Than, yeah, and we tell you maybe why we chose this well for you, for you and why we chose to bring you to this one today. There's a Bridgetine past you, but our granny was a good went to school to the Bridgetines in Mount Jack. Yeah, that's right. What's your first name? Marie McCormick. Marie. Mm -hmm. Marie. My brother Charles and my cousin Peter are here as well. Great. We are both past pupils of Mount Rath too. That's great, yeah. yeah. It's That's amazing great. when you meet people how connected we all are. Yeah. 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 I brought up a sculpture of Bridget. It was an indoor one. It was here for a long time until we got a new sculpture which you're going to see now. And this sculpture is sculpted by Annette. Macarma oh, yeah. and her husband was Tommy. in the Tommy was in the cathedral last night and loved the concert and they're both coming to Macarma Brothers tonight for an so Irish night. Sculpture. So yeah. you'll meet Annette the sculptor tonight. And maybe just to lead you, um, it was uh, Ollie's father who wrote this book of poems and songs and he has just one little verse that I've just chosen to lead you into the church as well. I'd, and he wrote it mainly for exiles. I'd love to go to Ireland in the autumn of the year when leaves are brown and begin falling down and the harvest moon is clear. To shoot again by moor and glen and see the heather grow and walk around St. Bridget's Well where Tully waters you can imagine him in heaven this morning, dancing, see all the McCorkle fans gathered here at Tully at St. Bridget's Well. So now we're going to cross the bridge and mindfully walk in. It's amazing, isn't it, when you think of the whole connection? Any further than here now. So we just gather. 
bringing the light of Christ into the 21st century. And she's almost to the lamp of the light, giving you the light as you come in, Bridget facing the rising sun. And when you're going out, she's almost giving you the light to take it with you, to be light bearers in our world today. So it's, uh, we're absolutely, people love this. You're probably wondering, we don't ever bring flowers here, but there are always flowers here. All kinds of flowers. All kinds of flowers. And people come and they leave bees and they leave things. Yeah, or you'll see it as we go further into the well. So it's just a lovely sculpture of Bridget. She's a member of Corps de Brida, a friend of Bridget. We have men and women who work closely with us, uh, she, you know, to revive again the spirit uh, of St. Bridget of Kildare. And if you look into our website, you'll see more. Melda gave you out little brochures, I think, and our web is on it. So you can follow us on the web. So, because we are just amazed since we came in. Mary's here in Kildare 21 years. One years this year. And we are just amazed at people who come from every country in the world, you know, have an affinity with Bridget. And just the same, we came the first to welcome us for the McCormack. <laughs> Amelda and Ollie, and brought us down to their house and gave us a meal. But we, I had met Ollie before that when they came down to collect the sculpture in Boris Bridge, uh, ten years before, I think. So little did we think that, you know, to be here to welcome us when we came in 1992. And to welcome the extended, extended McCormack <laughs> clan. Yeah, it's amazing. The whole thing is amazing. So our yes. ancestors would have come here to Tubber Breda and have prayed the rosary. And as you can see, they, they, the five stones here would be the five decades of the rosary. And what we do now with pilgrims is when they come, yesterday we had a group even yesterday, we had 45 from San Antonio in Texas the day before. And what we do is we reflect on some of the qualities of Bridget, associated with Bridget of Kildare. And as each stone, now we're not going to delay you this morning. As we know you're going all around Kildare today, just aren't you, to Thomas? The five, the five we're qualities. We may walk the stones, yeah. Mary, yeah. and just say, give you an what, idea. I just give you an idea. And maybe, yeah, we just say one hit, Mary, so yeah. with all our ancestors for them as we conclude. Is that okay? And Mary wants to also we're going to weave, going a, Bridget's weave a Bridget's cross for you. So you can watch your weaver, and she's going to weave you into the cross. Mm. The McCormick can, and if maybe some of you like, might like mention a dream or a hope. Oh, if you have for the future, anything, please, please, whatever needs. you want to weave in. Yeah, so maybe as we just move now to the first step. Bridget, the earth woman, the woman of the land. Her feast day, the 1st of February, the first day of spring when we have the snowdrops, which we call Bridget's footprints, and the little crocuses and daffs come out. We learned going to school long ago, maybe some of you did. And Nish Chakonari, Begon La Egol Conchina, is Teresh Nefela Brida Ardoi Memoyol. Spring has come and the days are getting longer, and after Bridget's day, I can hoist my sail and go out to sea again. So at this stone, we're just conscious of our planet Earth as the famous. Ecologist Thomas Berry, God rest him, would say, you cannot have well humans on a sick planet. So, to just be conscious, the woman, the, the woman of the land, and of caring for planet Earth. Now we move to the next door. Bridget has in abundance with her love and her concern for the poor people of her time. And in the earliest life of Rick, of Bridget, written by a Bridgetine monk, they say Cogitosis, in the 7th century, around the year 650, 22 of the 33 chapters in the manuscript have to do with Bridget's care and love for the poor of her time. So, and all the little legends and stories we have about her is of giving things away to feed the poor. The apples, and she shared everything, and often got her into trouble. 
So it was her concern and her love for the poor of her time. So just to remember, Bridget, the woman of the land, Bridget, the friend of the, the poor. poor. And we come to the next thing. Bridget, the woman of hospitality. Kildare was a centre of culture and learning. All were welcome at Bridget's door. No one was turned away. She loved the poor, the sick and the sore. She helped them on their way. So, Bridget's hospitality is a lovely, lovely um, ruin. ruin. Yeah. Yeah. I, saw a I saw a stranger yesterday. I put food, food in the eating place, place drink in, in the drinking, drinking place, place. Music, music in the listening place. place. And there, and the, the, the last stranger in her song. No, no, before that, Mary. Well, <laughs> my younger sister is calling me up. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, the stranger then he blessed me and my loved ones, my cattle. And the lark sang, sang in her song. song. Often, often, often goes the Christ, Christ. in the stranger's guise. Bridget, woman of hospitality, open heart, open mind. And we move to the next stone. And off in the wind of free is sound of who has the cut of Wherever your heart is, there your feet will take you. So it's amazing your feet your have heart brought all your of you here, here today. To so the feet has brought you to Kildare to heart. Your heart and your feet. Bridget, the woman of peace. She's depicted in many of the pictures that we have about her as with her foot on the sword. And there's a lovely little story about her giving away her father's sword again when a poor person came. He had a very special jeweled sword and gave it away. So just to reflect on the implications of that in our world today, when 15 billion dollars are spent on weapons of war. 15 billion, if only some of that money you know, um, we could reach out and feed the world and feed the hungry. One billion will go to bed hungry in our world of seven billion tonight. So the unequal distribution of resources, world resources. Just to remember the woman of peace giving away her father's sword. So she changed it into an instrument of life, a life-giving instrument to feed the hungry. Remember our ancestors and those who have gone before us. And remember Patrick very specially, Patrick McCormack and all of the McCormack clan who have gone before around the world. So we we'll just take a moment of silence. the early Irish books in the story we have. Mary is referred to the mother of God as referred to Mura Mamoil, Mary. Mary of Ireland, the Mary of the Irish. She wasn't just like Mary, the Bridget, they refer to her in the book as another Mary, our Mary, the Mary of Ireland. So maybe in connection with all our ancestors and of the past and just remembering their spirits and the spirit of our Maybe we just pray, some of you know it in Irish and some of you in English or in whatever language maybe you want to pray it, we'd say the Hail Mary. Many that do it all over the Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with us. Drawn to just tell him the story of the Lake of Fear, even though it's a little poem. So I know you'll be in McCormick Brothers tonight and probably having a little joke, as we say in Irish. Thing. And it's Bridget's soliloquy I'd like to give the Lake of Fear to God, and I'd love the heavenly host to be tippling there for all eternity. I'd gather the people from all the parishes around, and I'd give a special welcome to the women. The three Mary of great renown. I'd like Jesus to be there too. And I'd sit by the well with the men, the women, and God. 
and we'd be drinking good health forever. And every drop would be a prayer. Every drop would be a prayer. It's like our mystic, our, our poet, Patrick Tabner, who said, you know, God has been at his place in the bits and pieces of every day. A kiss here, a smile there, and sometimes a kiss. So, I'm going to weave across here now. Now, unfortunately, the water here in the other well is fresh water here, not because the road levels were interfered with when the water levels, I should say, were interfered with with the motorway. So we cannot, you know, drink from this. Well, you might wonder what are these? It was always customary to leave something at a well. Now, any more we, we I just say to people, look, to leave something here, maybe it's a hope, or maybe it's a fear, maybe it's some baggage we're carrying from the past. Maybe, you know, we all need healing in our lives. We're all wounded in some way or another. But people come here... Look at the prayer flags. I haven't seen those flags. before now. Mm -hmm. Somebody must have yesterday. put them up this morning or yesterday. What's it down? Yes. And people, maybe some, they come and they leave some little thing there. But we say, you don't have to leave. Just leave a something here, your heart. Here, something for your heart here or something that you want mm -hmm. to leave behind at the well. So Mary now is going to Mary weave... No. Sorry, we just widen out the circle that way there so everyone can see. Just make the circle a little bit wider. So the first one I weave in all the McCormack plant all over the world, right? All the McCormacks. <laughs> and the second one, all the McCormacks who have gone to God. Our ancestors, may they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Amen. The extended McCormack family. The extended yes. Now, what else would you like to weave in? You tell me now. I would like to weave in all the children of the McCormack clan, and particularly the five lovely children that are here this morning, and with children of the world for their safety, and they are our future. Lovely. <coughs> You're moving into this cross. All those named Bridget. Thomas, who had you named Bridget? You told me. Where are you? He's behind you over there. Come on. Come on. Uh, there would be a few in our family who were named Bridget. Uh, yeah. My great grandmother. Yeah. Uh, and my great, great, great grandmother. Yeah, Bridget. Bridget, yeah. You see, you had Bridget, Breed, Breeder, Bride, Bridie, Kid, Kid. Did he? Lessie, Brenda, all of those are variants of the name. <laughs> we said to Aunt Mary McAleese when she was here and we rekindled the flame of Bridget here in there in 2006. She said every bride that walks up the aisle didn't realise she was called after bride Bridget. Oh. Every bride, but she got a bride Bridget because that's how it got its, its name. Don't do that. Enjoy the company and the love of the McCormacks and the generosity of McCormacks. We can all go in there. That's a lovely thought. Thank you. You're from? Portugal. Portugal. And, you know, there are associations. Did you ever hear St. Bridget in Portugal? No. They're supposed to be a relic of St. Bridget in Portugal. Okay, I have to find out. You have to find out. <laughs> You weave in a prayer for planet Earth and from different yeah. places that we all come from and the interdependency of, of our, our planet all and of nature. Lovely. Okay. As Brian Swim would say, we're all the same set. We all, all the, the same air, same the same ozone there. Drink from the same. We're all the same set. We're all interconnected, every one of us. Yeah. And if we rubbish the Earth, as they say, we rubbish each other. Mm. We need the earth so bad. How about a prayer for immigrants who have to start a new life all over the world? We pray therefore for immigrants to Ireland especially, that we, we Irish people will be open hearted and welcoming, welcoming and that they will find a home amongst us and enrich our society as they, we know they already do in so many ways. We have become, from being a monoculture society in the last 
10 years has become multicultural in Ireland. It's a totally new experience for us. And it might be appropriate at this point to weave in peace then. From around the world, in Syria, Northern Ireland, anywhere else you want to pray for peace. Peace in our own hearts, peace in our families. This girl has something to say. Yes, no. yes. <laughs> All the poor people in the world are struggling to survive. That's lovely. Where are you from? Uh, all over. Military. <laughs> <laughs> we, we live so, in Germany. All in Germany. Deutschland. Deutschland. Willkommen. Willkommen. Danke. You studied German one time. Yeah, this girl is going to be doing some Irish dancing tomorrow. Oh, oh no. So, um, future star in the making. Where is she doing it? What? In the community centre. Oh, okay. There are very few uh, famous McCormick Irish dancers used to be with River Dance and yeah. Ronan McCormick and stuff. Ronan McCormick. Ronan McCormick. McCormick. Yes. Yeah. Oh. This girl is going out China and <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh. gratitude. Great gratitude for organizing for all this spirit and energy, energy and the vision to even bring this gathering together. Yeah, this idea. Yeah. It took a lot of energy and local. I was called down to me one morning, set for Nolly and we had a lovely chat in the last morning. Yes. That's so gratitude to Thomas. To Thomas. Oh, was it the great mystic? Meister Eckhart from Germany said that the only prayer you ever said was thank you. And my mother used to always say, oh, thanks be to God, and she led on, and his blessed mother. <laughs> and when we come together as a family now, we often say, you know, well, thanks be to God, and one of, one of us will always say, and as ma'am said, and his blessed mother. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing how, you know, what stays with us. <laughs> Now, what do we tie them all together with? One more that's this a lady wish to now. Okay. This lady wish to make it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I want to uh, to say that uh, for all the our parents, grandparents, and all the old people that is not here, but uh, it teach love. us uh, to to love this culture, to love this country, and to love all the things that you are uh, now uh, teaching us. But we have heard this uh, from our parents, from parents, and not people like that not here uh, in, at this moment, but uh, they they love this this moment too. Lovely. So we weave in all of them, and we weave in love, and all our absent love, and all our absent loved ones. Tell them, you know, what we do with Bridget's Cross, Risha. The Bridget's Cross was, here it has come down, in actual practice, it was actually a pre-Christian. Some, a lot of, of the customs even of visiting the world, there were pre-Christian customs that were brought into Christianity. And that's why we're finding here a lot of people coming because in some way, Bridget, in some way, it's an inclusive, you know, she can bring customs and peoples together under her banner and under her cloak. But the St. Bridget's Cross, the little story of her, the dying chieftain, this would have been the floor covering, our carpets, this would have been the floor covering at Bridget's time, the rushes on the floor. And we're told we're picking up the rushes and weaving them into the shape of a cross and telling them about Christ dying on the cross. And, that, and then down through the centuries, people hung them in their houses or put them in the rafters in the pastures, cottages, and as a protection against fire and disease. And people still do it today. And in some parts of the country, there was a custom on St. Bridget's Day in Ireland that if two farmers maybe had a quarrel or two neighbours, on St. Bridget's Day, they'd hand each other a Bridget's cross. And that was to say, look, let's start again. Let's make up. They didn't even have to say they were sorry. They just handed each other a Bridget's cross. And that means they made up and got on with it and left the baggage behind. So today, you know, um, we're on, just to tell you, on the 21st of September, we hope to set a world record here in the parish church in Kildare by gathering people 
from, again, oh, we've invited people from all over the world back to come. We have an affinity with St. Bridget through schools, churches, hospitals. And we hope to enter the Guinness Book of Records on the 21st of September by weaving Bridget Bridget's crosses in our parish church. That's really? Yeah, and it's great because they didn't have a category. They have created a new category for us. First of all, they said no when we wrote, and they said no, you enter another. You get into an art class and you teach how to make Bridget's Cross, and you have to beat a record of 1,999. <laughs> so can you imagine 2,000 people making Bridget's Crosses? So we wrote back and said, look, everybody that's coming to this will know how to make St. Bridget's Cross. So could we? you know, have a special category, and they said, right, we create a new one for you. So it said, Bridget's Cross is already entering, and we, they, they set the record, Guinness has set the record at 250, so we have to be 250, which isn't too bad, because I'm sure a lot of schools will take this up later, you know, but that's what it's all about, if it keeps the custom, and the spirit, and the craft alive, that is what it, So Mary's going to give you a blessing with So God. may Bridget bless the house and the country where each of you live. Bless every wall and every floor. Bless every heart that beats beneath its roof. And every mind and tongue forevermore. May Bridget bless the home that shelters each one of you and all your loved ones. And may she protect you and guide you on your journey around Kildare today. And at this gathering may be especially blessed. And may the light of Christ and Bridget be around you, above you, with all, below you, within you. And may the light shine out of the two eyes of you, like candles lit in the two windows of the house, bidding the wanderer come in out of the storm. And may the fire of Bridget warm your hearts till they glow like great fires, so the friends and strangers can come and warm themselves at you. So may the light of God and Bridget be with each one of you. Amen. Who do we present this to Thomas? <laughs> yeah. If only one. Uh, the youngest. <laughs> Who's the youngest? What's your name? Stephen. Stephen. Is mum and dad here with you? Somebody yeah. With you? Well, I think we give it to that family then. Uh, yes. 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 Bring the children. Go get it. Thank you. 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 No. Get around there, sure. Um, Slim. And that hill over there is actually Dunalling, which was the old original McCormick Court. Uh, it's the largest ring fort in Ireland. And so it's the largest fort in Ireland, and I suppose the people, I suppose, of the major branch of the McCormicks would have descended there at just about, you know, this, I think the death of one of the High Kings was. Uh, Conquerhur uh, Arborud and his debt was recorded as 1 BC and it would have been his grandson was uh, Kukarb MacMuggelkarb who the McCormicks all claim descent from uh, that hill would have I suppose this, that would have been the seat of the kings of Leinster and it was from there that they used to claim their power over the hill of Tara very famous granduncle, or it was two granduncles of Kukarb, uh, were Ail MacMatta and uh, Capri Nifar. And if you ever read the Tawn about Kukulin, it was Capri Nifar's son, uh, Urk MacApri, 
who actually killed Cúchulainn. Uh, and Ail MacMatta was married to Queen Maeve, and it was uh, she used to try to stir up Ail for jealousy, and that was how the Thorn started the cattle raid of Kool Aid. He had a bull, she wanted another bull, and she contrived to get him to go steal the bull for her. Uh, the reason why he, he was Ail MacMatta, the, the two other sons were uh, Finn Filla and Caprini Far. Finn Filla was the chief of the Fina, he'd have been regarded, we say, as the first uh, chieftain of the Fina over in um, Dunallan. And he would have probably been the National Army of Ireland at the time and of Scotland, and he would have probably have been involved in a lot of raids on Roman uh, England at the time, and even in, in Gaul and places like France and Brittany and stuff like that. Um, it is said. There's a few different sources of how Ku Corb got his name. Uh, his father was Muggle Corb, and it's said that Ku can mean the hound, which is the chieftain, and it can also mean the cry of kingship, which was a kind of, if you go to the Hill of Tara, it was said that the land screamed out wherever the rightful king was. Now it's said that when Ku Corb was born, he was in a basket put in his side in the chariot, and the basket fell out of the chariot, and his father picked up the basket to put him in there and it was from Ku Corb crying that the Druids recognised that that man was to be the future King of Ireland and it was his father was called Corb which is Corb is we say the old Irish for Cormac uh, he was given the title Muggle Corb for the service he had done to his son he was called the devotee of Corb uh, Ku Corb went on he had four sons and his four sons were uh, Cormac uh, the first one was Cormac Luch. It had been the south of Kildare that took his name. He, he, it became the, he, he'd have been the first Dal Cormac. Uh, they were, I suppose, one of the principal clans in Leinster up to the 8th or 9th century. Uh, the second brother was Cormac Arid. He went down and he moved to Muscogee. He first moved to Tipperary and a branch of his family later moved to Muscogee in Cork. Now there's two, uh, there was a famous saint, Saint Abon McCormick, who established monasteries throughout Kildare and in Scotland. His sister was Gobnet McCormick. She established uh, a holy well and a, an abbot and stuff like that down in a place called uh, Ballyvourney. And it's, it's St. Gobnet's well, very, very holy well, very, very much like St. Bridget here. Now the other two brothers would have been uh, Cormac Messon. Uh, Cormac went over, he had one branch down on the south of Leinster and the other branch of him went over towards the Wicklow coast. And it was uh, Kevin of Glindalock who was a branch of the Dal Cormac, or, or the Dal Cormac Messon. Mm. And it would have been the Dal Cormac Messon when the Normans first arrived in Ireland in 1169. There was about 600 Normans and about 500 Irishmen that went to attack Wexford town. And it would be descendants of, of, of Dal Messon Corb who would have been in the first engagement with them they routed them in the Battle of Duncormac in 1169, where the English forces, the Norman forces, had to go around up and, it, and they attacked Wexford instead. Uh, the other son then would have been. Uh, and Dalnia Corb. I think Dalnia Corb would probably be the most. He's probably not the most famous, but his sons definitely would be the most famous. Uh, he, there was a long line of kings would have come from him. Uh, the first would have been Cormac Gelt Gay. Who led? Uh, who, who said in 87 A.D. led an army of Irish, Scottish, and Pict warriors up in the Crampian Mountains against the Roman army, and he was killed there. And it is often said that the Cormacs of Coitness in Scotland descend from him. Uh, the second one, second son, would have been Cahar Moore McCormick. Now Cahar was the High King of Ireland for I think 37 years, and he 33 sons and three daughters, and. I think there's something like 250 of the major Leinster tribes all claim descent from Cahar Moor. And he's, he's 33 sons. There was 10 of them who would have had kind of lines of kingship for the kingship of Ireland. And I, I suppose between the Ukinsula, the Umuraku, and the O'Toole's and stuff like that, they'd have been in constant conflict with each other about who had the right for there. He wrote a very uh, famous testament called the Testament of Cahar Moor. Uh, you find it on the internet where he talks about all uh, the treasures of Leinster and which son was getting which son. And the fella he left nothing to 
was Dara Brach McCormick, who they say that Kildare is named after. And they said that while they left nothing to him, it was his line that would have the greatest fame. They became the Ubaracha, and they would have controlled, I suppose, from about the 8th to maybe the 12th, 14th century, they would have controlled the majority of, we say, South Kildare from South here, and actually northwards over to Carberry. And I often remember in the 1659 census, the only place where it actually records McCormick's in uh, Kildare was over in Carberry. Now, this would have been the burial spot for the Kings of Leinster. So, I'd, I would assume somewhere around here that there probably is or an ancient graveyard, whether this is the graveyard or not, of the McCormick clan. And there's two very, very old uh, high crosses. The tops are missing off them. I think both of them date from about the 7th century. And that's one of them has designs in it. And the second one is over here. This would be the rooms of the old church here. So, um, as, as well as that, I suppose, an, another uh, kind of aspect of why this associated is when the United Irishmen uh, had their rebellion in 1798, this was one of the places they were camped out for a night. And there was a, a number of very leading McCormicks involved with the United Irishmen, uh, both Catholic and Presbyterian. Um, there was a fellow here from Nace, Brian McCormick, who was transported for life to Australia. And he led a rebellion in 18, 1804 in Australia, and he was captured and hanged because of it. There was also uh, there was a William and Brian McCormick, uh, they were both Presbyterians. They fought at the Battle of Ballina Hinch up in, um, maybe up in County Down. And it's actually one of Dara Barak McCormick's sons went to County Down in the third century. He also went to Fermanagh, and his, his son was actually called Monarch, and it's where Fermanagh gets its name. But the McCormick's would say in County Down and Fermanagh would be both there from about the third century. There was also a, a John McCormick from Antrim. Uh, the Antrim branch of McCormick's are the McCormick's who would have went to Scotland in the 15th century. They did an invasion there against a, one of the Buchanan MacLeans over a title of a kingship over a certain castle around the Isle of Mull. And the McCormick's would have established a, a huge branch in Scotland, which we say I, I suppose there could be anything up to you know 10,000 McCormicks in Scotland today who would kind of originate from the Antrim branch. And I think even today in Ireland, after we say Dublin, Antrim would have the largest population of McCormicks. Uh, there was a Morris McCormick from Dublin. Uh, he was also transported for life to Australia. And in later years, in the White Boy Rebellions, which was a lot of what the concert was about last night in the uh, we say the, the music of um, Tomas Rue Sullivan. There was four uh, white boys who got transported for life. They were uh, Bernard McCormick from Mayo, uh, Martin McCormick from Kilkenny, John McCormick from Longford, and Daniel McCormick from Sligo. And as you can see, they came from almost every part of the country. They've been popping up for the past, especially we say in the last thousand years, there has been mentions of McCormick's in all the annals and stuff like that. Uh, there are several families that have very kind of, um, I suppose, strong uh, connections to the church, which would be the McCormick's in County Clare, the McCorm McCormick's in Donegal, in Derry, Fermanagh, and Longford. And I suppose the McCormick's associated with the rebellion then would be the McCormick's in Cork. Uh, they fought, I think, five successive battles, at three of them in the Desmond Rebellion. They fought in the 1601 Rebellion, and when one of their chieftains, Donna McCormick, was captured, he was executed by the English, they rebelled again in 1607. Uh, the McCormicks in Antrim would have been very, very prominent in the 1641 Rebellion. There was three major chieftains there, uh, Art Bryan and, I think, Dermot McCormick. So, uh, I suppose, nearly every part of Ireland had a branch of the McCormicks. In the 1652 census, there was actual records for 350 McCormick families. They were spread in 22 different counties, and there was, uh, there was I think there's five or six counties missing from the census, such as Galway, Tyrone, Mayo, and Wicklow, where we know there was very strong uh, McCormick branches. Um, so
that's really all I have to say about this area here. So, unless anyone has any questions or anything. Is the, is the rat still there? Can you see the rat is there, and I'll tell you why we didn't go up there. Is we called the um, the owner last night. The owner had said to us that he was hit by a cow the other day. Now it's actually it's it's quite a long walk up there. There is cows in the field over there. It's across three or four fields. But if anyone wants to come there tomorrow, we can go up for a walk ourselves. And I just thought that it would take probably a good an hour and a half to get up there and back down from from the hill. You can see the you can see the, the tree the line of trees going right around. Oh, that yeah. is actually a huge ditch. It's probably about ten foot deep, nearly like a moat. So it was uh, that's just the remains of the protection of the fort. Oh, wow. So myself and uh, Tomas tried to get in from the other side there, and it was impossible even to get through from someone else's land. The the moat was so deep and overgrown. But that would have been the main. Uh, the, Rampart and it goes the whole way around the, the 39 acres or whatever size that field is. There's a um, regarding how Dunalling got its name. Alling is a girl's name, she means beautiful, and it would have been a name popular in McCormick's, we'll say, I, I suppose back to 1500 years, back almost 2000 years ago. She was the daughter of, or she'd been the sister of Catherine Farr and Phil Finn and or Finn Filla and uh, Ail McMatta. But she fell in love with an Ulster man called Convalia. And the Linster men decided to use that as an opportunity for war. And the Ulster men decided that that was a great chance to invade the South because of this romantic uh, elopement, if you want to say. But both of them were advised to go meet at a strand, the strand of Valia, up in, uh, it's just, I think it's a, a little bit above uh, Drahada. And on the way, they're said to have met the great grey man. Now, whether that was a, a sign of a ghost or something or whatever, but the great grey man had told Aileen at first that her husband, had, Valia, Convalia, had died. But he, he was still on the way to meet her. But she is said to have died of a heart attack and there was an apple tree grew out of her. Now, they say that, even though she wasn't there, they say that the apple tree grew on uh, Dunalling for about 300 years and it was King Cormac MacArthur that cut down the apple tree and he's supposed to have wrote the lover tales of Linster and Ulster on it. And it was the same story that happened at uh, Valia. He was on his way down to meet Aelin and the great grey man met him at the place called, it's called Valia Strand now, just above Drogheda. And he said to have died there, so. Um, but there is, there is, um, Queen Maeve has supposed to have, uh, when uh, Kukarp died, he fought Basically, he fought 14 major battles. Uh, seven, seven of them were against the Munster men, and seven were against other Leinster tribes and against the O'Neills and, we we'll say, the Connacht and stuff like that. Uh, and upon his deathbed, he's buried below, just above Carlow, there's a place called Mount Leinster. There's supposed to be a standing stone up there to Kukarmuk. And there's a poem about him, so I'll, I'll say the poem. Uh, if I remember. Uh, uh, MacMugga Carved's son conceals renown, well sheds he blood by his spears. A stone over his grave, it is a pity, he who carried battle over Clumal. My noble chieftain, he spoke not falsehood, his success was certain in every danger. As black as a raven was his brow, as sharp was his spear as a razor. As white was his skin as the lime, together we used to go upon reflections. As high as his shield is a champion, as long as his arm is an oar. The fork against the kings of air and sons of chiefs, he maintained his shield in every cause. Countless wolves fed he with his spears at the heels of a man in every battle. Seven battles fought for his land, he swept over them like any razor. What battle of them admirable the deed in which he warned off not a hundred in every danger. The battle of Ahaf in fall, the battle of Ahn and Skald of bloody field. The Battle of Pursuit was the pursuance of a hero was fought by the chief of Mokmain. The Battle of Clostrish he broke to gain the man who had the deciding of battles. The Battle of Burnus or chief soldier fought his valour brought blood upon her spears. He defended by his arms his land when he killed kings who were not weak. The conquered galleon he raised the contest. Alas, the destruction has come in the sun. MacMuggacarp's son conceal his pronoun. Connect. Hey.
Sam is standing behind one of the old, old crosses that are probably oh, about 1,500 years old. The cross, the top of the cross, of course, is missing, but the rock remains. This hill in the distance was the site of uh, the old fortress where the kings lived. And as Mr. McCormick said, the moat, that the, the fortifications that kept people out all those years ago, 2,000 years ago, nearly, they still keep people out. They weren't able to cross it. And that's very interesting. Pan around and see the, the sights. So this is the remains of the old church here at the old graveyard where the kings would have been buried buried and you can see there used to be an old church here but it's gone you can just see the wall the outline of the wall that we've gone around it the other of the ancient crosses from about 780 the top of the cross as you can see is missing but the, the monument remains Can you take a picture of him? No worries, no worries. Another uh, burial site of uh, King Harmon. Now, in, in uh, Munster, there's kind of two genealogies to uh, the McCormick clan. There is the descendants of Cormac Cosh, and then they also descend from Barra of Rock. Uh, he came down through Clare and into Cork. Uh, the story about the McCormicks in Munster is they could have been uh, from uh, Cormac O'Killinan. Now, he'd, he'd be very strongly associated with the McCarthy clan, and we see an awful lot of... Um, McCarthy, as we say in the 14th, 15th century, were called uh, Cormac, and you have uh, Cormac Dunn and McCar McCormick, and then you had Cormac Dunn and McCormick, Cormac Dunn and McCarthy, and then you have another chief called C Cormac Dunn and McCormick, and I think the annals kind of have got a lot of their history mixed up, and they're both recorded as building uh, Cantor Castle, and they're both supposed to have been the leading chieftains in different regions and stuff like that. But another very interesting thing about um, Killing Cormac was they do they found an ohm stone there a few years ago and there's a Latin inscription on it as well as well as a, a man's name in Ohm and the Latin inscription said uh, the four truth druids. Now uh Duve took uh MacLugier McCormick who would have been Saint Bridget's father, he was the father of seven saints. Uh, one was Saint Fick who was right in the the townland next door. But he's said to be buried there and the own stone has been attributed to him. And he would have been the arch druid, he was also the arch poet and the arch uh, judge of Ireland during the time of St. Patrick. 
and he would have been based up on the hill of Tara. Now, there was a cast of druids up on the hill of Tara called the Carb, which would be the, the beginning of the surname McCormick. And they are associated with uh, sovereignty, and they were the ones who picked Irish kings and stuff like that. And But they're also associated with um, the study of the stars and the constellations. Now, there is a constellation in the southern hemisphere uh, called uh, Carvus in Latin, which is Carva Carvon in, in, in Irish, and it, it basically means uh, Carb the Noble. And it's of a raven, and if, uh, it, it's one of the translations given for uh, Carmack's name. It's of a raven uh, drinking out of a chalice, and the chalice is regarded as the chalice of sovereignty. And it's very much associated with the cards up in the Hill of Tara. There is an ancient story of Khan Kehetna, uh, you know, traveling into a mist and meeting uh, the other world god, Lu, and that he drank from the chalice of sovereignty. And some people say that the chalice of sovereignty was marrying a virgin and stuff like that, and it was a kind of a ritual to, uh, for the inauguration of the kings. But people have said that the carbs would have been strongly associated with killing Karmuk. And the same way as we have like dynastic settlements, you know, like the Brigidines and stuff like that, or the Dominicans, they would have said that the carbs of the Hilatara would have originated from killing Karmuk. And there was about six or seven different, uh, we say, Druidic orders in the Hill of Tara. Another one was called Blake, and there was another one, Esfog, which we know is, as a word for bishops. They were regarded as kind of um, for lighting sacred fires. But the Carb would have been kind of associated with the McCormick family in killing Karma. And it's kind of an unusual uh, translation often given for the McCormick uh, name was uh, incest or lewd. And they say that what it was was when the McCormicks or the Carbs were studying on the Hill of Tara and they were studying the, the stars at night time and the constellations and stuff, one of the kind of, I suppose, enigmas at the time was the uh, eclipse of the sun and or the, by, by the moon. And the Carbs would have had tonsured hair, uh, very much like a lot of their early, uh, we say, um, priests in Ireland and stuff like that. And they say what it is is, They'd half the head shaved and half of it was long hair. And used to regard that as the eclipse of the sun, which they call that the incest of the sky. And it's a, it's kind of a, it was a name attributed to McCormick's through the Druids and stuff like that. Um, also, uh, let's see. with regards to this site, the battle took place in the 9th century. This is called uh, Castle Dermot. I think it was a, a 9th century monastery was established here and stuff like that. So there's, a, I think there's two very old uh, Celtic crosses which would kind of predate it, that era. They could go back, you know, to the fourth or fifth century. And I say because of the unusual shape of this one, it'd probably be one of the oldest in Ireland because it did become more symmetrical after that. Um, that's a, that's a lot unless other people have other questions about the McCormick family and stuff, or do you want to know more history about us? Where is Killing Cormac? Killing Cormac would be just a little bit, uh, it'd be in the kind of area of where the Celtic cross were going to visit. Mm -hmm. Moon would have been like, there would have been a, a fort in, I suppose at the time there would have been a ring fort in Moon, there would have been another one in, in Ken Finna Cormac, and there would have been another one in Mullock And basically, if you're going out to like Mullock Mask, it's just, um, Basically, it's just a mound. It's just a, you know a bit of a ring fort like that. But I suppose in their days they would have been like the, the little village, or there, there could have been you know feasting halls there and stuff like that. Now within Mullock Mask, there was a, a very kind of a historic thing in in the I think in the 16th century. Sorry to ask, just yeah. just staying on killing comic, if anyone is interested in the archaeological museum in Kildare Street, that stone from Killeen Cormac is on display. In uh, I think it's the precious metal section where they have those books. They have stone. They have stone. Yeah. Yeah. So it's in the museum in town. If anyone wants to. What stone is that? It's the stone from Killeen Cormac. That, uh, it says it's the four druids on it. You know, with the old the old stone of approach. Or the druids would have just simply, you know, got the high king to kill all these people coming in spreading a, a 
unusual <laughs> religion at this time. Now, another interesting thing is this is at the Church of Ireland, and nearly every uh, round tower in Ireland at the moment is in a Church of Ireland property. That's got to do with the penal laws. But every round tower, and I suppose they were all built on like pre Christian sites. I know in Ockel, in, uh, just by the hill of Tara, it had to. Ockel was actually the sister of a fellow I was telling you earlier about, was Caprini Far. She had been the daughter of Caprini Far, and she had been the sister of Ork, the fellow who killed Cucullin, you know. And there's another uh, brown tower standing over here. And even where my great great grandfather came from in Kilkenny, there was a round tower. And when he moved to the States, in, um, he moved to the States during the famine. It's the only place in America they built a round tower. So I've always associated that, I've never made the, the right connection, but I've always associated round towers with the McCormick name, with the McCormick family. And I mean, they're few enough in the country, but I mean, wherever you go where the McCormicks had bases, there will be a round tower. I mean, then the lock is probably the most famous tower, which is associated with St. Kevin of the Dalcorn of uh, Messon. So, you know, um, that's roughly about it, though. Uh, and a, 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 a binding. I'm not too sure. I'm wondering if, would that have any connection with a wedding ring, you know, a wedding band? Oh, yeah. 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 I don't know. Yeah. That's just a, yeah. 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 Before we go, marriage we stone. I have the McCormick banners here. So we get a photograph with all of us holding the banners of McCormick at uh, some of the various press. So before we go, we get that photograph. So, yeah. oh, this is a marriage the, wrong tower, we'll take photograph. the couple would hold hands. Uh, so they're also the saved if anyone wants the banner. And it's a pre-Christian pre tradition. The money we're going to raise is to have fun the gathering. So of a certain castle being associated with the McCormick's or something, or an old house or something like that, you know. So I mean, if we find it out in the future, we'll all get together and we'll visit these places. And like, we visit places like St. Gobnet's well, and, you know, I, I, I would say, like, the McCormick's in Fermanagh as well, there's a big branch up there, and it's good, like, one of, one of the crests is of a white deer. And one of the places where the McCormick's in Fermanagh was a place called, uh, is it Dunboy or, Dunboy or something like that, which a small area of it was known as uh, the White Deer. And also, I think there was a branch of McCormick's they moved to uh, Lancaster in uh, Philadelphia that they named the farm uh, the White Deer. You know, so there's a bit of history. Now, the Fermanagh McCormick's had been fighting for a long time over land, over Maguire's, they were changing religion. I think there was two of them appeared uh, fighting King James. One was in the walls of Derry. And the same family next were over in uh, America, they were fighting the English. And I think originally, I think one of them was from Antrim, he was hanged in 1641. So that branch of McCormick's are uh, jumping from one side to the other side. To other. But the same branch of McCormick's, who they are Presbyterians, but they have produced, I suppose, some of the most successful Irish Americans in uh, American history. Uh, one of them would have been Cyrus McCormick. Uh, who was the inventor of the Reaper, or if ever, anyone's ever seen McCormick tractors and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. he would have been in his day the wealthiest uh, American. You know, if he was alive today, he'd have been the Bill Gates of you know his area. But he would have had a nephew, Robert McCormick, who would have been regarded as the most powerful man in American media. You know, and he 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 also had extreme wealth. Now, unfortunately, Robert has no descendants alive today. I think he had a, a relative. I was on to. Uh, they have a, a Robert uh, McCormick Museum. They sent me some photographs and stuff of him for the gathering and stuff like that. But he had no alive relatives today. And I suppose the third McCormick, they, they're not too sure they're from the same branch. But I suppose the most would be uh, something called Charles P. McCormick. They set up McCormick Spices, which would be a Fortune 500 company. So we send us some money, I wonder. <laughs> you know? and got, there was another uh, man called Mark, Mark McCormick. He used to run uh, kind of an agency oh. for sports well, stars. He was a teacher in Harvard Business School. He, he published a very famous book. Yeah, he published yeah. a yeah. book. Yeah. Uh, he only yeah. died two years ago, but he left his three sons 750 million euros. We've got to get him here as well, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but um, there, are, there are a lot of McCormick's who, I mean, there's a, a McCormick who is at one stage, he was ambassador to Russia, or the American ambassador to Russia. There was another American ambassador to uh, New Zealand. I think he's, he's still alive. He, he used to have, um, in America, he had McCormick Seafood 
restaurants if you've ever come across them. Yeah. Uh, you see, yeah, he, he bought he bought 128 of them, I think, at his peak. And I suppose if you want to see it, one of his big things every year was uh, once a year he would give American veteran soldiers uh, a free dinner in there. I know whatever is costing him. And I, I suppose another thing you can remember is um, there would have been, you know, I think in the American Civil War there would have been, you know, close to maybe maybe 1,500, if not more, McCormick's fought in both the Union Army and the Confederate Army. And I have a long list of, of you know, McCormick's getting killed in the battles, and a lot of them were members of the Fenian Brigade. They thought they were coming home to fight and stuff like that, and they were died, you know, I suppose, fighting the American Civil War, and I suppose families stayed over there afterwards. I know most of my family have stayed in America, and my own uh, great, great-grandfather fought with the Union Army, and I suppose there was an awful lot of, you know, I remember reading the immigration, um, yeah, there was about, for, for just a loan to go into New York during the Irish famine, there was about uh, 2,000 McCormick's. And I noticed a lot of them, they were, you know, you get the ship list of who was on it. And a lot of them, there was kind of like eight-year-old boys and nine-year-old boys who their parents must have died during the travels and they arrived there on their own, so, you know. But um, we'll, we'll get a photograph now, so we'll finish up the tour, okay? Thank you. Okay.